Plants are literally the backbone of every ecosystem. They are where the energy starts, and without them, life on Earth would cease to exist. They have just as long and interesting of a history as the dinosaurs do, but no one ever really talks about them much. A brand new study finds that some forms of plants in Cretaceous Brazil wouldn't have been entirely unfamiliar to us if we decided to inspect them. Flowering plants tend to be the group of plants us humans are most familiar with. They grow the fruits, seeds, and nuts we derive a great portion of our diet from. Without these plants, we may not have even evolved at all. Of course, there are also the gymnosperm plants that preceded the flowering plants and that battle against the fruit makers to survive and thrive to this day. Your conifers, cycads, ginkgos, and more. But despite the importance of the gymnosperms, the angiosperms are much more important to us specifically and understanding their evolutionary history is thus even more important. The origin and radiation of the flowering plants are still shrouded in plenty of mystery. In fact, it remains one of the most enigmatic themes in the entire understanding of the evolutionary history of the vascular plants as a whole. The fossil record has helped clear up some things here and there, but like with all other living things, the fossil record is still quite incomplete for the flowering plants. There is a scarcity of the earliest flowering plants for a multitude of reasons, but some gaps are being filled in thanks to rock layers that preserved all that died there in exceptional detail. Enough data has been acquired from these rock deposits to at least infer that flowering plants may have originated in the tropical regions, but even these rock layers and areas of study need more investigation. The first eudicots, a group of flowering plants characterized by having two seed leaves upon germination, date back to the middle of the early Cretaceous epoch, across northern Gondwanan and southern Laurasian regions. The fossil information here indicates these plants diversified in northern Gondwana first. One of the earliest groups of this group that crops up every now and again in the fossil record is the Nelumbonaceae, a family of aquatic flowering plants known as the lotuses. For those interested and confused as I was when I first started researching this video, the lotus that I, and hopefully y'all think about, is the floating pinkish flower similar to water lilies. These are the true lotuses. Apparently, there is also a group of plants that have the genus name of lotus, but there is also the mythical lotus tree from Greek mythology that might be triggering some Rick Riordan flashbacks. Apparently, the lotus from Greek myth that the lotus eaters ate kind of has nothing to do with the Asian flowers that I think about when I think of lotuses. The things with the trypophobia triggering seed pods. The things with the roots that is common in Asian cuisine. Yeah, the lotus from Greek myth is like a fruit that they ate and just called lotus? I don't know, something interesting to think about, I guess. Anyway, this group of plants is quite old, with macro fossils from the family dating back to the end of the early Cretaceous epoch. I say macro fossil because micro fossils have been a tremendous help in the understanding of plant evolution. Pollen, spores, and all sorts of itty bitty goodies fossilize better than big soft flowers. Anyway, the lotuses seem to have remained in a general evolutionary stasis for 100 million years, as most of the ancient forms look a lot like the modern forms. That being said, the group seems to remain relatively diverse across time and space. There is the Nelumbites from Cretaceous Kazakhstan, Siberia, and Virginia, ex Nelumbites from the latest Cretaceous of Mexico, and Nelumbago from the Paleocene of Canada and Colorado. The only one to survive to today is the Nelumbo, with a North American and Caribbean species and an Asian and Australian species. So, in the past, they have had a near worldwide distribution. They must have made good eating for dinosaurs and the things that came after them, just as they are today for humans. Now, a brand new study 
published in Nature's Scientific Reports by a huge team of researchers helmed by paleontologist William Gobo, describes and names a new lotus from the middle of the early Cretaceous rocks of the Crato Formation of Brazil's Araripe Basin. This basin and the Crato Formation layer of it represents a lacustrine or lake environment with a bunch of laminated limestones. Recall that, in geology, lamination refers to a bunch of rather fine layers of rock that you can relatively easily see with the eye. This formation is considered a Konservat Lagastata. These are deposits known for the exceptional preservation of fossilized organisms or traces. The individual taphonomy of the fossils varies with the sites. Conservation Lagastatan are crucial in elucidating important moments in the history and evolution of life. For example, the Burgess Shale of British Columbia is associated with the Cambrian Explosion and the Solnhofen Limestone with the earliest known bird Archaeopteryx. The Crato Formation is important as it is one of the only and currently the best record for understanding mid-early Cretaceous low-latitude paleoecosystems. It is also the origin site for a bunch of insects, arachnids, fish, amphibians, the infamous Ubirajara, Tetrapodophis, Susisuchus, and Tupundactylus navigans, as well as specimens of Tupishara, Ludodactylus, Lacusa vagus, Brasiliodactylus, Amberidactylus, Arthrodactylus, sauropod footprints, and a ton of plants. This layer of rock has seen a lot of controversy because a large portion of the fossils found there are sold off and exported to other countries, namely Germany. This has occurred illegally and against Brazil's laws and also under gray area wiggle room shenanigans, with some transactions occurring immediately before the laws were in place and so on and so forth. I've talked about it extensively at this point and there is no real debate over anything going on. By Brazilian fossil law, none can be legally exported without some parameters I don't need to get into. Before I get into the new fossil organism, I would like to point out that the author team provided a few acknowledgments and author statements at the end of the paper that you should read in their entirety before judging anything. They explain how this particular instance and its context are not the same as those that occurred with Irritator, Ubirajara, Tupundactylus navigans, and Tetrapodophis. The team had a whole bunch of fossils to work with. That's the nature of flora over fauna, thankfully. The specimens preserve leaves, flowers, stems, roots, and fruits. They decided to name it Notosiamus hydrophobus, with the generic name composed of noto, meaning south, and siamus, meaning bean, and the specific name composed of hydro, meaning water, and phobus, meaning fear, in reference to its ability to float. Some even preserve plant-insect interactions. A gall was found on the leaf and petiole, with a gall being a kind of swelling growth seen on the external tissues. When all of its anatomical traits were tallied up and put into the phylogenetic software, the team found that this Notosiamus was most likely most closely related to the Nelumbo genus. Notosiamus is the oldest known lotus from the late Berimian or Aptian ages of the early Cretaceous of Brazil, about 115 to 113 million years ago. This creates new questions about the paleobiogeography and evolution of these plants, as they were previously thought to have originated and diversified in the northern continents, the Laurasian continents. The author team tentatively hypothesized that the new fossils might mean these plants evolved first in the mid-latitudes of the northern regions of the southern continents, the Gondwanan continents. Only more research and more specimens from earlier times will help support or reject this hypothesis. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.